Hello and welcome to this episode for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here at Embedded World Nuremberg 2025 and it's been a fantastic event. And I'm at the on semi stand, joined by Danny. Thank you for having us today at this Thanks, stand. Robin. Nice to meet you. You too. Uh, my Thank name you very is, uh, much. is Danny Cheffer. I'm a product line director for the Image Center Group within Old Semi. And today we're here to introduce you the brand new devices of a brand new family They're called ITOF Hyperlux ID. Uh, there was a press release yesterday, I believe. Yes. Mm. And today we're showing you the products live. And immediately when looking at the demo, you can see the biggest, the largest differentiator there is compared to competition. This sensor, this setup is actually able to measure depth mm. in moving objects. All of the older, the alternative solutions, they can't really measure depth uh, when objects are moving. So can you imagine a conveyor belt that has to pass every two boxes? That's awkward. You can see, when you measure the depth, you can see the differences in height on the different objects. Uh, while everything is moving. Now, the really funny thing about this is that I've personally been working on some projects where I actually needed to count some parts on a conveyor belt, some, some loose components. Yeah. The problem is I tried to do it with images, uh, you know, with a webcam. So you can kind of use like uh, color detection and figure out where the shapes are. But the problem is if you've got two components on top of each other, that's actually two, but my system would read it as one. Correct. So with this system where you can infer the heights, you can also tell that if you've got an area of things being piled up, overlapping. you've got overlapping objects from different heights, so you know that they're overlapping. Exactly, and you can actually see this object here in white, you have a similar one in black, Yep. and here you have exactly what you're saying, you can see the it subtle differences it in height, yeah. and on the screen you can actually see, of course the colors are color-coded, eh? the color represents a yep. certain height, you can see the differences. And, and, and so basically, if you've got a camera system which is purely based on color vision, that black object or the white object, you're not really going to be you able to see the difference. Do, yeah. Yeah. But you combine it with this system, this uh, uh, time of flight sort of uh, uh, um, depth perception, then you can start to say, actually, even though it looks like it's only one object, it's actually maybe six, because we can Correct. detect Correct. the individual yeah. heights. And you haven't even seen the larger difference. The other large differentiator is next to the depth map. It also gives you a monochrome image. So you can actually combine a visual image together with the depth information. Really? Yes, so it gives you even stronger solution, more powerful solution. And on top of that, what we added to the chip over here is we do the depth calculation on chip. So we don't need to worry about calculations and, and overhead, etc. So it's actually becoming a very simple system. You have the camera, you have the lens, all your power supplies, etc. And then you have one camera that gives you the depth information without the need to do all this post-processing it's by yourself. Chair. Correct? It's all on the chip. Blimey. So, so obviously the first application I can think of is production lines, any kind of manufacturing line. Yeah. But where else do you think this could be useful? This is the funny part. Uh, yes, we have, of course, our markets that we want to target, like robotics, uh, inspection, robots in warehouses, for example. So robotics also is a very broad term, similar as, as machine vision. Um, face recognition, uh, the depth in your face, the depth profile of your face. Ah. But What's happening here at the show and also with all the interest from customers with this device, we create our own market. Rather than have a product like Me Too or following a certain market trend, I believe strongly with this device we create our own market segment right now. We see different applications popping up left and right that we even couldn't have imagined when we started the development of this product. Wow, so that, to me that sounds like you're going to need to get a lot of engineers working on this just to try and um create content around this just to show the other, other engineers what you can use it for. Yeah, yeah. So in, it, that would then make your market leader in this type of technology. Yeah. With all the differentiators I've seen so far, uh, I've not seen anything negative about it because we have the higher resolution. We have 1.2 megapixel, which is four times higher as so existing resolutions today. We have a range that's larger, uh, about six times larger. We can detect depth up to 30 meters in distance. With wait, the wait, how, how far? 30 meters, three zero. That with this, with this little thingy, yes. 30 meters. 30 meters, with an accuracy better than half a percent. So that translates, if I'm not mistaken, oh, yes. about it's 15 that... centimeters on the distance of but, 30 meters. But, but that's still 30 meters away, though. Uh -huh. Blimey. me. No. That's honestly quite shocking. So, so even though one to 1.2 megapixels doesn't sound like a lot, but that is an image combined with depth of field. Um, with with a, what kind of frame rate are we looking at then on this thing? Uh, and the full resolution is 60 frames per second. 60 frames 60, per second? 60, 0. Yeah. Which, Seriously? as far as we can tell, is sufficient for most application that is, the application Six, we could imagine. 60 frames per second is really fast. Yeah. You're not going to, I, I can't foresee 
an industrial application, for example, like this, needing more than 60 frames per second. There was actually one funny story with that because people tried it on 60 frames on the conveyor belt to see how fast the conveyor belt yeah. could run and still being able to take the depth. Shooting the across. boxes were just hitting the wall. <laughs> So, to be fair, that's, that, maybe you should have done that instead as your example. There's these things flying off the wall, being picked up by the sensor. Somebody collecting all the, wall, the boxes <laughs> over there. All that time. No, no, no. Brilliant. No, but this, I think this demo says it all pretty much. That's so important. do you think this could be used for things like automotive as well, where you've got maybe something like imaging combined with uh, uh, sort of like... Like a LiDAR or... Exactly, this, like autonomous, or autonomous driving. Field. Yes, yes, yes. That's collision avoidance, that's one application, exactly, for yeah. example. Also with robotics, you have your robot arms swinging about. If somebody stands in the way, all of a sudden you can decide either the person needs to duck or the arm needs to stop. At least now we have a warning signal like, hey, careful, something's coming. So to get into the technology itself, how is the, the, the ranging, the distance finding actually done? Because typically with a LiDAR system, you spin something or you scan something and you saw a picture, but it takes yeah. a while to, pick, pick, uh, to, to build the picture. But if you're operating at 60 frames per second, yeah. How are you achieving that? So there are actually four laser dyes on this PCB next to the sender, and we have pulsed light uh, with different phases, and we measure phase differences oh, between that, the, the light that returns. That so sounds like that kind of sounds like the same technology you get in things like uh, autofocusing, where you kind of get phase detection. Uh, yes, yeah, that's somewhat different. The, the wording is the same, but the technology below it is is, is different. Ah. In this case, you're measuring the difference in phase from the light that returns back to the sensor. While direct time of flight, you basically send out the pulse, you and wait it comes until back it returns, you, you measure it. it. That's okay, but it gives you a nice range, but it doesn't give you the, uh, the accuracy that this system can achieve. So by measuring the phase difference, you measure the distance from you, from the camera to the object, but also you can measure local differences between an object over there and an object behind it, and you can even measure the difference of the distance from that last object towards the camera. So you have multiple levels of information, and by combining that, you get a more accurate result. And so, to, and again, again, to be clear, when it comes to that that distance finding, that's it's not like you're able to sort of detect objects within a specific slice of distance. It's like the whole thing. You get the whole surface profile. Correct. So what kind of uh, so in terms of resolution, we we say like one point five megapixels. One point two. One point. Oh, sorry, sorry, one point two. But, doesn't matter. Yeah, but but. Let's be honest, 1.2 is clearly enough. And it, at this point, it is way more than enough. Yeah. But so, but in terms of like, um, in terms of like sort of the, uh, so let's say at this distance, you said about, is it half a percent you were saying? It was like the, the, the half yeah. so this is about 30 centimeters. Yeah. So that would give you uh, a typical resolution uh, about a foot or 30 Yeah, a few millimeters probably. So you're talking about a few millimeters in, 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 in height yeah. difference. Well, actually you can see the, on the white object here, Yep. The difference in height between the different levels is one to two millimeters. And, you're, really, and, and you and you can, can tell from the screen so when it passes about three, by. Two, you can see, one, there it there. is. And you can and you see, can't see the, the difference. Color. Exactly. So that proves yeah. the half of the percent. Brilliant. Yeah. So in so in this case we're using it to determine where objects are and their relative sort of heights and stuff. But where else do you think it might be useful for if in, in an industrial environment? Uh, in terms of like conveyor applications, do you think it could be used for something like surface details or something like surface uh, details? But dimensions, for example, oh, the dimensions, passes yeah. by dimensions, yeah. um, the height of a box compared to the bottom of the conveyor belt where it's resting on. Uh, what else? Um, you can use it to allocate specific devices and then maybe with another camera read specific information on that box. So I think it can also be a useful tool during manufacturing, basically as a verification tool or to check presence of things. And and in terms of uh, uh, sort of depth, depth of field and uh, and uh, distance finding in general, what challenges would you say that engineers typically face? What challenges? Oh. Hard to say. Hard to say. Hard because to say this one because will solve them all. Yeah, well, I, it, I know it's an easy sales pitch like that, but uh, there must be some some disadvantage. But testing yeah. has been done, for example, outside in bright sunlight. Yeah. So with the pulsed approach that we are using, we're less susceptible to ambient light, so we can get rid of most of the sunlight. That so, actually, that's a really good point because yeah. I know I know the fact that a lot of a lot of cameras like these, when you have low light, uh, it, it does struggle to pick up images. Yeah, it takes a while for the uh, for the image to be. Um, What's the word? You have to leave the exposure on, and which means you get the drop in frames per second, and that makes it harder to use uh, in, in certain applications where you, where you haven't got a bright light sort of illuminating it. So in this case, you're able to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. No. 
That's absolutely fantastic. And we have videos where we can actually see the tests have been done outside, bright sunlight, on a parking lot, for the distance up to 20 meters. We have oh. pictures where you can actually do, for example, inside mm. with 30 meters. Now, it could be that for different distance ranges, you probably have to tune the system a little bit differently, but that mm. depends on the application. But I've just realized then that, it, let's, say, let's take, for example, an industrial robotic environment where you've got autonomous, uh, let's say, like a uh, warehouse crate moving mm. systems, right? They could go inside and then outside a large change in light, but the, but the fundamental hardware doesn't care. It can carry on working. You know, yes. both examples. Yeah. And like I said, maybe it has to adjust the automatically the system settings a little bit, but yes, you can use it for both scenarios. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So just before we wrap up this video, I've got one more question for you. All for right. the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with these solutions and have the world's best LiDAR slash imaging system, what would you recommend that they do? Yeah, they have to contact the local sales representative of Old Semi and that guy or lady will get in touch with the business unit and then we can provide all the information they need. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to see Thank us today. Thanks. Thank you very much. Today. Thank you.